Bernard of Cluny was a 12th-century French Benedictine monk, best known as the author of De Contemptu Mundi, a long verse satire in Latin, Life. Bernard's family of origin and place of birth are not known for certain. Some medieval sources list Morlas in Burqtarn as his birthplace. However, in some records from that period he is called Morlanensis, which would indicate that he was a native of Morlay in Brittany. A writer in the Journal of Theological Studies, Volume 8, pages 354-359 contended that he belonged to the family of the seigneurs of Montpellier in Languedoc, and was born at Merles. It is believed that he was at first a monk of St. Sauveur d'Anger and that he entered the monastery of Cluny during the administration of Abbot Pons. Several of Bernard's sermons and a theological treatise, Dialogue on the Trinity are extant, as does A.C. 1140 poem which he dedicated to the monastery's abbot Peter the Venerable, the Monastery of Cluny. The first monastery in Burgundy was at Cluny, started by the Benedictine monks in 940 AD, with over 1,000 monks in residence, more than the population of most towns of that time. Large buildings had to be erected to house everyone and 40 farms produced the food. The abbey became grander and grander as its power over the whole of Europe increased. It was the largest church in Christendom, only succeeded later by St. Peter's in Rome, dominating for hundreds of years. It organized pilgrimages, oversaw hundreds of other monasteries and governed by the power of excommunication. On contempt for the world, Bernard is best known as the author of De Contemptu Mundi, a 3,000-verse poem of stinging satire directed against the secular and religious failings he observed in the world around him. He spares no one, priests, nuns, bishops, monks, and even Rome itself are mercilessly scourged for their shortcomings. For this reason it was first printed by Matthias Flacius in Varia Poemata de Corrupta Ecclesia Statue as one of his testes veritatis, or witnesses of the deep-seated corruption of medieval society and of the Church and was often reprinted by Protestants in the course of the 17th and 18th centuries. This Christian version of the satires of Juvenal does not proceed in an orderly manner against the vices and follies of his age. It has been well said that Bernard eddies about two main points, the transitory character of all material pleasures and the permanency of spiritual joys. The same themes as a much earlier treatise of the same name by Eucurius of Leon, which Erasmus had edited and republished at Baal in 1520. His highly wrought pictures of heaven and hell were probably known to Dante, the roasting cold, the freezing fire, the devouring worm, the fiery floods, and again the glorious IDYL of the Golden Age and the splendors of the heavenly kingdom are couched in a diction that rises at times to the height of Dante's genius. The enormity of sin, the charm of virtue, the torture of an evil conscience, the sweetness of a God-fearing life alternate with heaven and hell as the themes of his majestic dithyramb. He returns again and again to the wickedness of woman, the evils of wine, money, learning, perjury, soothsaying, etc. This master of an elegant, forceful, and abundant Latinity cannot find words strong enough to convey his prophetic rage at the moral apostasy of his generation. Youthful and simoniacal bishops, oppressive agents of ecclesiastical corporations, the officers of the curia, papal legates and the Pope himself are treated with no less severity than in Dante or in the sculptures of medieval cathedrals. The early half of the 12th century saw the appearance of several new factors of secularism unknown to an earlier and more simply religious time. The increase of commerce and industry resultant from the Crusades, the growing independence of medieval cities, the secularization of Benedictine life, the development of pageantry and luxury in a hitherto rude feudal world, the reaction from the terrible conflict of state and church in the latter half of the 11th century. The Song of the Cluniac is a great cry of pain wrung from a deeply religious and even mystical soul at the first dawning consciousness of a new order, of human ideals and aspirations. 
The poet preacher is also a prophet. Antichrist, he says, is born in Spain. Elijah has come to life again in the Orient. The last days are at hand, and it behoves the true Christian to awake and be ready for the dissolution of an order now grown intolerable, in which religion itself is henceforth represented by cant and hypocrisy. The meter of this poem is no less remarkable than its diction, it is a dactylic hexameter in three sections, devoid of caesura, with tailed rhymes and a feminine leonine rhyme between the two first sections, the verses are technically known as leonini cristata trilases. Dactylus I, and are so difficult to construct in great numbers that the writer claims divine inspiration as the chief agency in the execution of so long an effort of this kind. The poem begins, Hora nova sima, tempera pessima sunt, vigilimus, ecce min asiter imminent arbiter il supremus, imminent imminent ut mala terminet, equa coronet, recta remuneret, anxia liberae, ether adonet. It is, indeed, a solemn and stately verse, rich and sonorous, not meant, however, to be read at one sitting, at the risk of surfeiting the appetite. Bernard of Cluny is an erudite writer, and his poem leaves an excellent impression of the Latin culture of the 12th century Benedictine monasteries and Catholicism in France in general. A number of well known modern hymns, including Jerusalem, The Golden, Brief Life is Here Our Portion, The World is Very Evil, and For Thee, O Dare, Dear Country, are translations of parts of this famous poem. 700 years later, Richard C. Trench published the initial stanzas of the poem, beginning, Herbs Cyanoria, Patria Lacti, in his sacred Latin poetry. John Mason Neal translated this portion of the poem into English and published it under the title, Jerusalem the Golden, in his medieval hymns and sequences. Neal made revisions and additions to his earlier free translation when he published it in his The Rhythm of Bernard. The text found in the Psalter hymnal is the most popular of the four hymns derived from Neal's translation. Other works Bernard's Consuetude and as Senebi Cluna at Census is the earliest of the three great Clunuic costumals of the second half of the 11th century. This work contains, as the older costumals of the Abbey do not, a detailed description of the procedures followed at Cluny in the intercessory remembrance of all socii and benefactors. Bernard of Cluny also wrote the 12th century hymn Omni Didic Marii. American composer Horatio Parker composed an oratorio utilizing texts from Bernard of Cluny's poem Hora Nova Sima in 1893.